Let's hit H. pylori first. Let's Go do ahead. it. So I had H. pylori. So I'll tell you from personal experience and you and I clinically have seen many, many, many cases of H. pylori. Let's start with the conventional approach to it. So first of all, the testing for H. pylori is not very good in the conventional world. And there's an issue with false negatives. Luckily, the DNA stool test that we use is very effective and we can find it very accurately. And conventional treatment is going to be what's called triple therapy or sometimes quadruple therapy, which is three or four antibiotics at the same time to try to kill this helicobacter mm -hmm. infection, which if you look at the microscopic photo of it, it kind of looks like a jellyfish. It's got this creepy little look to it with a creepy little tail. It's not a pretty little bugger, but man, it causes damage to those parietal cells, which secrete stomach acid. And this is something that was very controversial for many times until the researcher actually infected himself with H. pylori and gave himself an ulcer, right? You and I talked about that story before. Yeah, that, that was Dr. Marshall, I think, in the, in the mid-80s. He couldn't get funding for his research, so he's like, hell, let me be the subject. And so he just infected himself with it. And H. pylori, like you mentioned, is that helico-shaped helix -shape kind of bacteria that kind of burrows into the gut lining. Uh, it's, it's controversial because, well, I shouldn't say it's controversial. We know that it can cause ulcers and stomach inflammation. We know that it can affect acid secretion. Now, a lot of people complain that it's going to increase your acid levels. Um, H. pylori tends to actually decrease acid levels. Um, it creates an enzyme called urease, which takes the metabolite from urea protein metabolism. It turns it into CO2 and then also ammonia. And ammonia has got a pH of 11. So on the typical urea breath test for H. pylori, they give you a bunch of urea. And the whole thought process is if you have H. pylori, you're going to have more of the urease. And that urease is going to convert that urea into ammonia and CO2. Then thus a positive CO2 level is going to be, give you the H. pylori indicative for a breath test. Now that ammonia has got a pH of 11. So it will start to neutralize and start to move your stomach pH in the more alkaline direction. So kind of one to six is going to be your acidic scale. Okay. One is going to be 10 times more acidic than two, two times, two, 10 times more acidic than three. And then you get to seven, which is going to be neutral. That's your water. And then everything above that's base or alkaline, right? And so ammonia is that 11. So you're taking that pH in your stomach that should be around one and a half to two and a half, and you're moving it more neutral. And so of course, that can affect a whole bunch of problems in your stomach from indigestion, dyspepsia. You're not breaking down your proteins. You're not activating your enzymes. And also H. pylori can thin out that gut lining. So part of the reason why people feel like it creates more acidity is because your gut lining gets thinner. Your gut lining gets thinner, thus making you more sensitive to acid in your stomach. It's kind of like if I got a sunburn, right? If I got a sunburn and I went out the next day in the sun, did the sun get hotter? Well, it feels hotter when I'm in the sun with a sunburn, right? Did the sun get hotter? No, it is your skin's more sensitive. That's when you're out in the sun. It feels like it's 150 degrees out, but it's not. It's the same thing with your intestine. You got a sunburn gut that feels more irritated. Thus that acidity, the acid that you're putting in there may cause some irritation, just like going out with a sunburn. Yeah, that's a great analogy.